the Olympics. Here we are again at the International Broadcast Studio with our coverage of the 2021 Summer Olympic Games. Join me in welcoming my beautiful co-host, Victoria Derbyshire. Victoria? Thanks, Rob. We are thrilled to be bringing you coverage of what is happening in the world of Olympics this week. We will have more live coverage of events happening as well as interviews with local sports figures who participate in summer Olympic sports. Mm. That will happen. Yeah. The absolute thrill of these ancient games. For hundreds of years, many things have changed, but these have remained the same. Defending champions have high expectations, and the thrill of victory will be choking these Olympic rookies with the anticipation of a chance on the medal platform. That's right, Robert, and, and these athletes keep getting younger and younger. This and year, Sky Brown will be competing in the new Olympic sport of skateboarding as one of the youngest Olympians in history at only 12 years old. And also competing this year is Hend Zaza, an 11-year-old tennis player from Syria. She won four out of five matches at the Western Asian Olympic Qualification Tournament. She'll be the youngest Olympian in 52 years. Wow, oh my goodness. Just a mere child. You know, Victoria, the youngest Olympian ever recorded to have participated in the Olympic Games was 10-year-old Demetrius Landres, however you say that name and he participated in the very first modern Olympics in 1896. I wonder how old that makes him today. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we'd better get going with our coverage, Robert. Yes, let's check in now with our roving reporters, Wayne and Kendall. How's it looking out there, gentlemen? Hey, thanks, guys. Okay, me and Wayne are back here to watch the 100 meter dash, the men's 100 meter dash. You know, Usain Bolt is in this race. Usain I've really Bolt, been looking he's, forward to he's watching fat. Never he's got fat. to watch him. He is very he's fast. He's very fast. Played soccer for a little bit. Wasn't I didn't too good at that. I didn't know. <laughs> so let's okay. hope he can let's hope he can make why. up for it here. All right. They all look determined. Damn, I know, they look ready. I know I would not be able to compete with no. this. He just looks massive. They look ready. All right, Usain taking off. Very good start. Okay. Very good start by Usain. That he's man looks moving. like Kevin Durant out there. He does look like Kevin Durant. Oh, there oh. he goes. He oh, is there. He is running. Oh, what? That, oh, hold, 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 hold up, hold up. What, are they just all stopping? What? I guess they gave up. Usain's just that. Usain good. is just too. Usain, just insane. he's just gonna jog it out. And he oh, wins, he's, he even famous, has the hands up. He's like, pose. oh, I got. This. He knows it. He knows he's it. like, I got this in the back. Cameraman walking up right to him. They're kind of moving too. You ever seen those guys run? They can move. Yeah, because they're they like right, they're like right with them. They're awesome. you know they're they're there. Mm, they're, they're right they're there with the camera. And the whole thing. They don't even have a scooter or anything. I know they they're just running. Oh, they're and trying. doing his famous oh. pose. Okay. Famous, but a lot of reporters. A lot of them. He, he knows That's he's the champ. Look he at knows. Him. He knows he's the, he's the champ. Ron James of track and field. Oof, the goat right there. The goat. <sighs> All right, now we're gonna send it back to Adrian. Back to Adrian. <laughs> that's awesome. He falls flat on his face. That's incredible. <laughs> Those How are does that even happen? Videos. Like they. Oh, and it uh, and it looks like I didn't even know you guys were gonna bring it to me. Um, we're gonna send it right back to you. Uh, so take take it on over, uh, Wayne and Kendall. You got it. Thanks, Adrian. You saying with a great win there. I mean, they couldn't compete. They they, they just couldn't compete because they knew yeah. they couldn't. They he they they all gave up. You see that cameraman? He was he was catching he, up. With he, was, he, was he was running. running. He was running. He was running. I mean, the crowd's going crazy. Just a great win. He's I mean, just, even the other runners don't know good, what they dude. just saw. Oh, oh, it looks like he's down. You it saying like it's down? Looks like he's shaking up a little bit. The cameraman, it, the camera's on the ground and broken. He's stumbling that's, away. That they're doesn't look like a good sign. have to go get that looked at. That doesn't look like a good sign. I hope he's fine because I I need to see more. Need to see more of Usain Bolt in this race. For real. I love Usain watching him run. It's just crazy. He's just he, Usain looks like he's fine though. He looks great. Usain it was his Oh, oh. oh and they go down. He just the where, camera where, where took was him the out. Cameraman looking at? Graceful rollback. I'll I'll give him that. I'll give him that. The uh, the cameraman was not so great. He no, so no. Nice the All he said, right. He said well, we'll whack him real quick. <laughs> back of the head. Now we're gonna send it back to Adrian. Back to Adrian. Thanks, guys. And we'll send it back to you. 
can't say that. Oh, my bad. My bad. My check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play. your local Summer Olympic coverage with me, Rob Kostra, your favorite, as always. I am joined today by Ella Claire Trebon, who is a local equestrian. She practices daily and participates in equestrian competitions. Ella Claire, when did you start preparing for equestrian competitions? Well, I started riding when I was three, but I really started training about four years ago. Hmm. Interesting. So, you aren't new to the equestrian games, as I can tell, and do you participate in more than one event, maybe? Yes, I do. Um, I do endurance riding, show jumping, and so endurance riding, my brown horse, Seven, he has over 2,400 miles of endurance competitions. I have only ridden him in one, which was last October, and Endurance riding is long distance trail rides, so they have 25 milers, 50 milers, 100 milers, and I rode him in the 50 miles, and then I did another competition a few, a few months ago, and after 12 miles, he came up lame and pulled, which means that his, so what we think happened was he hit his leg really hard on a rock and technically just sprained his ankle. And so we had to pull from the ride because he couldn't, he couldn't go on without injuring himself more. So what does pulling even mean? Um, just like taking yourself out of the competition. Oh wow, how sad was that? So anyway, 
What about your horses? And uh, how many do you have? I have two horses. The white one is Max. I do him in show jumping competitions. He's like a yard pony. I ride him around the yard, jump him. He's, he's a fun, easygoing one. And then the brown one, he's 21 and Max is nine. And so seven, he's the one who I do endurance on. And he has, like I said, over 2,400 miles of competitions. And he's a great horse, but he's really more of a strict trail horse. He gets wound up in fields, and he really knows what to do on the trail. Oh, wow. So would you say you have, like, a favorites? I can't really choose favorites over them. They're both wonderful in their own ways. Hmm. Oh, wow. How inspiring that answer was. Anyway, I understand you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I made myself laugh. <laughs> Let's continue now. Mm -hmm. I understand you have brought some videos of your competitions. Can we watch them now? Yeah, of course. Yes. How great. Wow, what amazing, great, beautiful, great videos that those were. That, that was, those were just great. So, who are you going to be watching in these upcoming Olympic equestrian competitions? Well, Jessica Springsteen, she's... Wait, wait, time out. Springsteen? As in, like, you know, like, the boss? Like, like, Bruce Springsteen, like, as in, like... Like B-R-U-C, Bruce. Like, like, as in like, born in the USA. Like I, that? I guess. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I don't know who Bruce I, Springsteen I, is, but I, I think that's the name of I need dad. a minute. <sighs> For all of our viewers, just a reminder that the 2021 Summer Olympic Equestrian competition will begin on July 24th and will come to a close on August 7th. Be sure to check your local listings or the Google thing to see where to watch on your phone or your computer laptop thing. Sure, that thing. Hmm. Sorry, but let me ask you, if you were to have to choose one proportion of the races or events you participate in, which is the most important? Well, the end's absolutely the most important. If you pay attention to one part of the competition, the end is the most crucial. If you finish well, you can win the race. Wow. Hmm. Another great answer. I just have one more question before we go. Can you tell us about a person or, or persons that encouraged you along the way? Of course. Yeah, well, my family, because they were, they're always there to you know, encourage me on. And my aunt, she lives down in Georgia. I go down there to train, and she's always there for me as well. Actually, I know I said I have one more question, but I actually have one more. What is that right there? This is, is my hat? helmet. Helmet? <laughs> it is not a hat, definitely not it a hat. Looks like a hat. It's Interesting hat. hat. Okay. So this is a helmet, and you always want to ride these when you're riding. You always, you always want to wear these when you're riding. Because if you fall off and hit your head, it could be very, very bad. And you could hurt yourself. Yes, yes, you can always wear a helmet. Hurt yourself. Always wear a helmet. Always. Always. Well, Ella Claire Trebon, thank you so much for joining us today to give us a little more insight into the equestrian sport. Oh, of course. Thank you, Rob. We appreciate your time. So, uh, <laughs> the end is most important, huh? That makes me think of a Bible story. Here, I'll show you. Let's watch this. Okay. Okay. John was on the island of Patmos when he had a vision. Jesus appeared to John and showed him what will happen before the end of time. John wrote about what he saw in the book of Revelation. 
John saw a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it. The one seated looked like fiery red stones. A rainbow like an emerald surrounded the throne. He saw 24 thrones around it and 24 elders sat on the thrones. Each elder wore a gold crown. John saw four living creatures around the throne. The first creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third creature had a face like a man. And the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. Each creature had six wings all day and night, they said. Holy, 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 Lord God, the Almighty, who was, who is, and who is coming. John saw the creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to the one on the throne. The elders fell down and worshiped. They said to God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things. Then John saw a scroll in the right hand of the one seated on the throne. A mighty angel asked, who is worthy to open the scroll? No one in heaven was worthy. No one on earth was worthy. No one under the earth was worthy either. John began to cry loudly <laughs> because no one was worthy. At last, one of the elders said, Look, the Lion of Judah may open the scroll. He is worthy. Then John saw someone near the throne. He was standing like a slaughtered lamb. He took the scroll and the elders and the living creatures fell down before Jesus, the lamb. The elders threw their crowns at his feet. They worshiped him and sang a new song. John heard thousands and thousands of angels around the throne. They said in a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. John heard every creature everywhere, in heaven, on earth, under the earth, and on the sea, worshiping the lamb together. John cried when he saw that no one was worthy to open the scroll. Then John saw the resurrected lamb, God's son, Jesus. Jesus was killed on the cross so that we could have forgiveness and eternal life. Jesus is worthy. He deserves all praise, honor, and blessing. Hey, thanks you guys. This week in our video, we saw more of John's vision that was given to him by God. These four creatures, one with a face like a lion, one like an ox, and one like an eagle, and one like a man. How interesting. I think those remind me of the athletes in a way. The lion reminds me of a weightlifter, super strong and muscular. The eagle reminds me of a gymnast, flying through the air as they flip. Another thing the story told us was that these creatures were constantly saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is coming. What an awesome thing to say that constantly. I'd love for my entire life to reflect praise and glory to God like that. As the video says, Jesus is the only Holy One, the Lamb who was slain for our sin. God deserves all blessing, honor, and glory forever. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Good morning and welcome back to our coverage of the 2021 Summer Olympic Games that are currently being held in Tokyo, Japan. If you're joining us, my name is Victoria Jebashire. And I'm joined today by Hadley Hughes, who is our resident expert in the Summer Olympic sport of archery. Thank you for joining me this morning, Hadley. Thank you for having me. Um, so, um, if you have time, I'd love to ask you a few questions about archery. Sure. Okay, awesome. Let's start at the very beginning. Um, can you tell your viewers what exactly is the sport of archery? Archery is the art, sport, practice, or skill of using a bow to shoot arrows. Historically, archery has been used for hunting and combat. In modern times, it's mainly a competitive sport and a recreational activity. A person who participates in archery is typically called an archer. I, I see you have some equipment with you uh, to, to demonstrate for us. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, so this right here is called my quiver, which helps to hold my arrows and other equipment that I need. And then, of course, this is my bow that helps me shoot the arrows. And right here is my sight that helps me aim. And so I can demonstrate if you like. Oh, yes, of course, please. <laughs> that is very wonderful and scary at the same time. <laughs> I will, uh, 
Uh, and the goal of archery is to shoot one of your arrows at uh, close to the center of the target as possible, correct? Yes, that's it. The way to improve your aim is to practice a lot. Uh, I can imagine. And, and how far of a distance do you have to be from the target? Well, you have to shoot at 30 meters to compete at the local tournament level. At the Olympic level, the distances are much further, more like 70 meters. Goodness, well that certainly creates a goal for you to practice toward. Uh, speaking of practice, what does your training schedule look like? Well, I practice some at home, but then I practice with my coach two times a week for about two hours. Interesting. And, and is there a season for archery or is it a year-round pursuit? Well, archery is year-round, but once it starts getting colder, it's indoor archery and it just depends on the weather. Interesting. Now tell me, what is it that drew you into wanting to be involved in the sport of archery? I remember my brother would do it sometimes in the backyard and I wanted to be like him, of course, so I tried that and I liked movies, of course, with bow and arrow, like The Hunger Games, which was of my Of course. Favorite. Okay, this is my favorite as well. <laughs> um, so um, how did your brother encourage you in, into archery? Well, he, even though he might not seem like it to me, he was encouraging me in his own way. And so I really started developing skill for it. Very interesting. So Hadley, are you excited to watch the 2021 Olympic sports news coverage of the archery events? Yes, I'm planning to watch all of it. Good. And for all of our viewers out there, the first day of the archery competitions for the 2021 Summer Olympic Games was July 23rd. And the competitions will all be finished by July 31st. Check your local listings to be sure you don't miss any of the action. Hadley, we sure appreciate your willingness to come teach us some more about the Olympic sports of archery today. It was an honor to talk with you about it. Thanks for having me. And thanks to our audience for joining us.
We're back now for more of our coverage of the 2021 Summer Olympics. I'm back here in the International Broadcast Station with my co-host, Robert. I am the main host, actually. Thank you. Thank you. No. Yes. The Olympic dream. Athletes have toiled for centuries to achieve Olympic gold. And today, for some of our athletes, that dream has become a reality. You can have your parents check online for a medal count and see which country is leading in gold medals. It's fun to keep track of how many medals your country has won so far. Yes. You know, I enjoy watching the medal ceremonies because during the awarding of the medals, they play the national anthem for the country of whomever has won the gold medal in that event. <laughs> it's so thrilling to see the athletes and their teammates celebrating their victory victories and getting all emotional and, and cry and you, you know and when they hear their country's anthem begin to play gloriously over the loudspeaker it's just it's just amazing well that, that's and, all we have time for today ladies and gentlemen i'm victoria derbyshire and on behalf of myself my colleague robert kostra and the entire fbc olympic coverage team i'd like to thank you for joining us yes have a heartfelt thanks to all of you have a wonderful afternoon. We appreciate you being with us. Bye bye now. Sayonara for now, friends. Close. Sayonara. Sayonara. And goodbye. Goodbye. Once again. Robert! Let me go last, please. Sayonara. Bye bye.